So you may have seen or heard that we actually have a manufactured drone that's gonna be able to capture 360 degree footage in one package. This has been a long sought after thing by creators. In fact, you can go on YouTube right now and search 360 drone footage, and you can find all kinds of wild videos of people strapping 360 cameras to drones, or people using 360 cameras with extremely long poles, trying to emulate drone shots. It's all out there. Well, now we actually have the real thing, and I got to try one out. All right, so just about a month ago, Drone DJ was invited out to a high-speed go-kart track out in Southern California, where we got to join up with a bunch of other creators and other outlets. So we were invited out there by Insta360 and Anti-Gravity. And as you may or may not know now, Anti-Gravity is a smaller company that has been incubated by Insta360. If you go on Drone DJ, you can read all kinds of articles about that. And you can also check out the Drone DJ YouTube channel to check out the launch video about Anti-Gravity. So part of the day was to introduce us more to the brand about anti-gravity and sort of what their mission is and what they think about the drone space and sort of what their idea and their roadmap is for the actual product line that they're going to continue to build upon outside of this particular product. And then, of course, the other part of the day was getting a chance to test the new product, which they are calling the A1. Anti-Gravity 1 because it's going to be their first drone. And this is sort of officially the world's first 360 8K drone. So basically everybody got to spend a few hours flying some drones and riding some go-karts. The go-karts were super cool. I won't go into details about them, but they were super high-speed electric go-karts. Uh, sort of right below maybe the Pro Circuit, maybe a little bit even further below that. Um, but the drones, on the other hand, were pre-production units, which is a great set Way. All right, so before we get really started, let's talk about some housekeeping really quick. Like I just mentioned, the drones that we flew out there were pre-production units. Everything we tested actually was a pre-production unit. So all of the equipment that you're gonna see and all the footage that you're gonna see is all pre-production based. So when the final production unit comes out, all of this sort of might be irrelevant, but for the most part, just take it with a grain of salt uh, as we were still doing a lot of uh, testing for them with this particular event. So let's talk about the specs that we do know about. We do know that the drone is capable of shooting 8K footage. Unfortunately, on the day of recording and when we were at the event, we were only able to fly and record in 5K 30, at 30 frames a second. But we were told that the final production unit is gonna be very close to the Insta360 X5 8K performance. So if you're familiar with that camera or if you've seen any video from that, that's what you can expect from the A1. So hopefully when we get closer to the final launch of the actual product, we'll see some more footage like that. And if we get an actual pre-production unit or a production unit in our hands, we'll let you guys know and we'll do some more testing. Also real quick, I know everybody's gonna be asking, but as of right now, prices are not available. We do not have any info on pricing. I know that's gonna be probably one of the number one questions down in the comments. Unfortunately, as of the recording of this video and the release of this uh, embargo, there is no information on pricing. So ask away, but we don't have any information. Let's talk physical features. So this drone package comes in three parts. You're gonna have the drone itself, you're gonna have the hand controller grip, which is how you're gonna control the drone, and you're gonna have the goggles, which is going to act like the screen in order to see where you're going to be flying. So one of the specs that we can talk about is the fact that this drone is coming underneath the 250 gram mark. At 249 grams, it does make that travel legal here in the States and a lot of other countries, and it also allows it in the US as of now to be one of the drones that you do not need to be registered with the FAA, which makes it really friendly if you're just looking to casually fly a drone like this. So the drone does have safety features built in, as of right now, the ones that we know about is it does have obstacle avoidance, which I do not have any details on. It does have a return to home system, and it does have a new feature, which is a payload detection feature. If the drone feels that it has a payload higher than the 249 gram threshold, 
it will automatically land. Now we don't have any specs as far as what the weight capacity is over 249, but you can see here demonstrated that if it does feel any weight over a certain threshold, the drone will automatically land. All right, let's start with the basics of the drone before we get into the fun stuff. So you can see here that the drone has foldable arms. So this is more of a standard style drone, how the arms fold in and out. You can also see that it has two blade foldable props on each arm. It also has a removable battery that slides in and out of the back, just like a standard drone battery. The rear, as you can see here, has a USB-C port and a micro SD card slot, along with two small indicator LED lights. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. So the front is fitted with these two ultra wide lenses, which are very similar to what you'll see on the Insta360 X5, X4 series of cameras. And here you can see they're stacked in a certain way. And the reason why they're stacked this way is so that they can be stitched together to create the 360 degree view. There's a large LED light here in the center. And of course that's an indicator light. And there are two front facing obstacle sensors. Again, with some more fun stuff and new tech, Going to the bottom of the drone, you can see that there are obstacle avoidance sensors here. There's also an LED light, but the highlight of the bottom of the drone has to be the landing gear. This has to be one of the coolest things I've seen on a drone in recent years. So there's a few reasons why they built retractable landing gear on this drone. Number one is so that it retracts in the air and becomes invisible to the cameras so that the seamless stitching can happen. And then number two, so that when it lands, you don't scratch the lower 360 lens, which is super cool. And so that pretty much sums it up for the actual physical attributes of the drone itself. All right, so now let's talk about the operations of the drone, which are the real reasons why you guys are here to watch this video. So if I'm being completely honest, I was not sure what to expect when I was going to operate this drone. I don't have a lot of experience operating FPV drones, and I have not had a lot of experience using the DJI goggles with drones. So I wasn't really sure how great I was going to be of a drone pilot. And luckily, it was really easy. Surprisingly, it was a piece of cake and it couldn't have been any easier, to be honest. Now, the main difference that you have to think about from flying this drone to an FPV drone, when the operator is flying an FPV drone, when you turn your head left or right, normally the drone will also turn with you left or right, and that is the direction of the flight path. With the A1, you can be looking in any direction and it won't affect the flight path, which is crazy to think about, but it's also really intuitive when you're actually trying it. So let's talk about the AG1 grip controller. When you look at it, it looks pretty intimidating because there's a ton of buttons on it, but once you get it in your hand, it actually feels really sturdy, really nice. It's built well, it has some weight, um, it feels great in the hand, it's comfortable, and it feels actually a lot more like a solid video game controller versus something like the DJI grip controller that feels a little bit more plasticky and a little bit cheaper and not as robust. Going over the grip controller, moving the controller points the drone in the direction that you wanna fly in. So raising it or lifting it up will send the drone straight up or dropping it down will lower the drone. The trigger is more like the accelerator. So if you pull the trigger harder, you'll go faster. If you lay off the trigger, it's more like a pedal it'll slow the drone down. And then of course, if you let it go, the drone will stop. As far as the buttons on the front side, where all the main controls are. You have the big red button here, which is the stop button. So if you quickly press that, the drone will automatically just stop in its flight path. If you long press it, it will actually return to home. The jog wheel will actually rotate the drone left or right. And then if you press it, it resets the orientation, sort of like a gimbal. The record button is obvious. You press that and it'll record video. The photo button, if you hit that, it'll take a photo. This small switch here, you can use that to raise and lower the drone instead of actually raising the controller. And then here are the flight modes, which go from cinema, normal to sport. Unfortunately, we did not get to try sport mode. Now let's talk about what might be the most exciting, controversial, or wild card of the bunch, which are the goggles or the headset. If you've ever worn a pair of DJI goggles or a VR headset or even FPV goggles, adjustment-wise, they're all the standard adjustments. So the focusing on the inside of the goggles to get them in focus, to separate the lenses, to fitting the headset to your head, it's all the same. That's all the standard stuff. 
they were pretty comfortable. They were pretty lightweight. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that the battery pack is actually not in the headset. And you can see here that the battery is actually a necklace. You wear it around your neck. Um, it's a little battery bank. Um, again, we don't have any info, unfortunately, on how much capacity the battery bank has. Hopefully, we'll get more specs on that as we go. But the battery pack itself, wearing it, didn't feel uncomfortable as well. It didn't feel heavy. It felt pretty comfortable. I actually didn't notice it for most of the time that I was flying. And the headset felt really comfortable, and it wasn't heavy or annoying to wear like some of the other headsets out there. So overall, that was a pretty good experience. So on the inside of the view, you have two lenses and two screens, and you can see exactly what you'd think you'd be able to see, which is the point of view from the drone, except you're able to see in 360. So you can turn around, like I was saying earlier, in any direction and you can see. So if you look down and you're above the ground, you'll see below you. If you look up, you'll see the sky and you can turn around in any direction. And you can do this while you're in flight and you're not going to disrupt the flight path, which is, again, one of the cooler things about the operations of the drone. But it's pretty wild to be able to look around while you're mid-flight because it does kind of feel like you're actually flying. It's almost a next level version of a VR simulation. Now the screen resolution, I don't have any information on that. They didn't give us any of that information. It wasn't the highest quality. I can tell you that it did feel probably HD or less, but it was good enough to see what we were doing. And inside there, there was also all the overlays that you'd expect to see when you're flying a drone. So all the information about what's happening in the flight from battery info to the flight path. So just like any other drone operation, you get all that info on the screen so you can see it right there in front of you. There is also supposedly a pass-through mode. I was not able to test that, but you can supposedly use the pass-through camera so that you can see in front of you when you're wearing the goggles and you don't have to take them off. Other than that, that's really it for the inside of the goggles. The wild stuff really happens on the outside of the goggles, so let's jump into that. As you see here, you have a left and a right circle and they sort of look like bug eyes. And then right here in the middle of the goggles, you can see that there is a small camera above the nose area and that is the pass-through camera. But again, we did not get a chance to see it work or at least I was not shown uh, how it works. The right circle, as of this recording, did nothing, but it is supposedly in the future going to be a touchpad where you can control things in the drone and probably within the goggles, and you'll be able to swipe around on that touchpad. Uh, so it's going to be additional controls. Again, we weren't able to use it. It was not operational. The wild stuff really happened on the left side of the headset. And you can see here in this little example, there's a screen on the left side of the goggles. That screen is a live view of what's happening from the drone. And the concept that they are going for is when you're flying this with a friend or multiple friends, they can experience what you're flying. It is not a 360 degree view. It's a 2D view. So you don't get to see the panoramic view, but you can see what the flight path is and they can see more of closer probably to like an FPV view of what you're seeing. So we'll see if anti-gravity's concept of this is gonna stick. I don't have a feeling one way or the other really. My only concern is, is it gonna suck up more battery life being that there's a third screen on the headset? I don't know. Leave a comment below, let us know what you guys think. All right, so let's wrap this up. So based on my experience briefly out there with the drone for that one day, I would say that the drone's super fun to fly, no doubt about it. And just being able to have the ability to reframe your shot in post-production using their app makes it really fun. And obviously you can be a lot more loose and uh, a little bit more free with how you're flying and definitely uh, just fun overall. Nothing really else to say more than that. But um, you know, there's a lot of room for improvement. And like I said earlier throughout the video, we don't know a lot of specs on the drone. So we're going to learn just like you are as time goes on when they start releasing more information. The production models will hopefully get a lot better um, than what we were able to test out there as uh, we get closer to the launch date, which is going to be in January of 26. So hopefully in the next couple months, we'll start to see 
um, closer to the final production models and hopefully we'll get our hands on that. So obviously there's still a ton of questions that need to be answered. I think, you know, aside from the spec questions and sort of the nerdy stuff about the drone, all the tech stuff that you and I probably get caught up in, uh, you know, whether that's log profile or 8K versus 5K versus 4K uh, versus a Kodak here or there. Those are, you know, cool questions to ask and those are very important questions, but really the looming questions that anti-gravity is going to be facing here in the next six, eight months or not while they launch this product are uh, bigger picture. Things like, you know, what does the launch strategy look like? Are they going to have trouble getting the product launched in the U.S. similar to like what DJI is facing? Um, you know, what does the tariff situation do to their initial launch? Is that going to be a problem for them? Is that going to hold them back? You know, what does that look like for the price? And obviously the price is a big point here that we, you know, have not been able to discuss because we don't know what the price is. So the price is obviously going to dictate, you know, the success uh, or at least a lot of the success of the initial launch of this and who the audience is for this particular product. The product feels like it's made for a consumer as far as the way it's constructed, as, as far as the way it's thought out, as far as the way it's designed um, because of the ease of use and sort of the bloodline and through line that it has with some of the other Insta360 products. But the tech inside it obviously is very expensive and that may be more on the prosumer professional price point level. So, you know, where is that going to fall in the price category and who's going to actually buy this? As far as the drone's capability, I don't think it's really going to take away from the professional FPV flyers or the professional cinematic drone uh, flyers out there. You know, there's the Inspires of the world or, you know, even like the Mavic Cine type drones. You know, those are very specific drones that you would use for specific shots. And this is not for that. Um, and same thing with, even though this can emulate some of the FPV style footage, there's very specific things that you need in an FPV drone that this still probably can't achieve. So I don't think it really crosses those um, lines yet, but we'll see. And, you know, obviously, again, the price point is going to be a big point of uh, infliction here and in, in how well this drone does initially out of the gate and how well anti-gravity does as a company right out of the gate. So those are the bigger picture questions that, you know, they're faced with right now. And again, January of 2026 is going to answer a lot of those for us. So we'll see. And hopefully they make it because I think that having another competitive drone player in the space to compete against DJI is really important because it helps create innovation and it gives DJI a reason why they need to push the boundaries. So it's cool to see somebody at least take them on head on. And I know that DJI and Insta360 sort of have this kind of inner working sparring battle going on with they're launching a 360 camera in anti-gravity and Insta360 are launching a drone. And, you know, they're sort of battling each other in, in their own way. But just to see another really actual competitive drone enter the space, uh, that hasn't been entered in a long time is really cool. So hopefully more companies will do this and hopefully we'll we'll start to see a lot more innovation in the space. I did just want to touch on something really cool that Anti-Gravity is offering. They are trying a crowdsource co-creator project idea. You can go on their website now and drop your email in there. And if you are selected, they will contact you and set you up with a AG1 and they will let you test it and um, you can give them feedback. If they select your feedback, your feedback could actually make it into the final production model um, that goes into production. So I think it's kind of cool that they're trying to source ideas from the creator community to try to improve the product. And they say that they're gonna take this approach with more products in the future. So we'll see, we'll see if it works, but I think it's a cool idea that they're actually reaching out ahead of time for their first product. Um, obviously it's a little bit of a gamble, but it's also kind of cool that they're doing that. So yeah, you can go on their website now and check it out. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions regarding the AG1 or anti-gravity, make sure you leave us a comment below. We will try to answer it. Of course, if it's about price, I don't have an answer for you and probably won't for some time. 
Make sure you stay up to date on the Drone DJ website because that's probably going to be the first place that you'll see it. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Please.